Have you seen that before where you can see people have, for example, like other clinical biomarkers that are not, that, or that are unhealthy, like higher fasting blood glucose or maybe elevated triglycerides, elevated C-reactive protein, a marker of inflammation. Yes. Do you find that those typically correlate well with the epigenetic age or? Um, I wouldn't say um, it correlates well. It correlates, you know, so people who have higher levels of inflammation and um, what you mentioned, the, um, their epigenetic clock goes a little bit faster, but, but the word is there's a weak relationship, you know, because it is quite possible that somebody looks, um, turns out to be in good shape according to epigenetic aging rates. And um, the number one example I want to mention in this context um, are um, actually people of Hispanic ancestry. Um, unfortunately, Hispanics often have a higher risk for diabetes, the higher metabolic syndrome. And um, however, according to the epigenetic clock, they actually age more slowly, you know. And um, so, so there's this really this disconnect. And, um, and um, this is actually an interesting disconnect because there's something known as the Hispanic mortality paradox, you know. Hispanics, as I mentioned, have often um, a disadvantageous risk profile according to um, clinical biomarkers. But it turns out, on average, they live much longer than expected. They actually live longer um, lives than people of European ancestry, you know. And that association w is paradoxical to a clinician it, um, who looks at clinical biomarkers. But according to the epigenetic clock, it's not paradoxical because, as I mentioned, we have found that um, Hispanics age more slowly according to the epigenetic clock. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the epigenetic clock cor correlates more closely with lifespan Yes. Than, than with clinical biomarkers that's of right. health status. That's right, that's right, yeah. Well, in a way, that's yeah. uh -huh. kind of good because, you I mean... Well, it shows it adds something, you know. So um, the epigenetic clock is actually very much under genetic control. So some people just inherit um, a genome that makes, um, or DNA, that really allows the epigenetic clock to progress more slowly. And um, so the heritability is about 40 percent you know and um, yeah so in this sense um, it's not just lifestyle factors by contrast some of the clinical biomarkers you mentioned are very much under under the influence of lifestyle you know so you can probably um, cure um, 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 high glucose levels by just avoiding carbs right <laughs> and um, so um, and also um, high lipid levels by avoiding um, or, or taking statins, you know. So uh, there are a lot of clinical markers that can be influenced uh, um, with lifestyle interventions and pills. By contrast, we don't have many interventions that um, allow us to reverse the epigenetic aging rate. You know. but, but do we know that? Have we been, we haven't been testing that though, right? Yeah, I mean, um, not really. I mean. Um, in my lab, we clearly want to find interventions that slow the epigenetic clock, and by now many people are working on it, you know, and um, it's a gold rush who comes up with um, an intervention right. that uh, affects the epigenetic clock, you know.